because the land you're standing on is hollow ground. Yes. You know, people would say that they would go in front of God and they want to talk to God. No, everybody that I see in the presence of God, they bowed down to God. They weren't bold and rash. And this is what God said to him. Come now, therefore, I will send you unto Pharaoh that thou may bringeth forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. And that's the only thing we can ask for is for God to be with us. And then, then shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt and, and when thou bring forth the people out of Egypt shall serve God unto the, this mountain. And Moses said unto God, When I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, they shall say unto me, What is his name? Yes. And what shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, You tell them I am that I am has sent you. Thou shalt say to the children that I am have sent you. God is, he was, and always will be. The only way you can explain God is that I am. And so he sent his son into the world. Yes, sir. And when his son came, you know what people said? Prove it. Prove it. I want you to prove it. You know, when God sent Moses, Moses, he gave Moses a, a, a stick. And he said, throw that stick down. He threw it down and picked it up. It was a snake. He threw it. He had to have some proof that he was who he said he was. Yes, sir. And he had, had a leprous hand. He put that leprous hand inside his cloak and then they'll come out clean and he put it back and it will come. He had signs. They said, Moses, prove that I am sent you. Okay. God sent him these signs. What if somebody said that to Jesus? Prove that I am have sent you. Yes, if Jesus come and said, I am yes. the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't lost on the Jews. Who are you claiming to be? You yes. claiming to be the son of I am, I am? Yes. Jesus said, yes, I am. Yes. Not only that, he says, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light, light of life. Of life. Right. You know what they said to him? They said, prove. Mm -hmm. And in John 1, 9, he says, that was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh to the world. What do you mean true light? True light. Isn't this a light? Right. Isn't the sun a light? Mm -hmm. yeah. On a full moon, isn't the moon a light? He said, no, there's one true light. Yeah. All right. All right. No. Know who that is? That's I am. Yeah. That's Jesus Christ. And what they want him to do is prove. And that's what we want, right? We say we're going to follow Jesus. We want some proof. You know, Brother Jackson made some pork chops the other night. I wanted some proof that it was pretty good. You remember about three weeks ago, I did this lesson called The Greatest. And I asked you who was the greatest basketball player. I asked you who was the greatest football team. <laughs> and I said it was Tampa Bay. Somebody said, no one mine. <laughs> Give me my moment here. <laughs> I asked you who was the greatest football player. And I said, Tom Brady. I'm like, no. Just you know who just won Super Bowl right now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he said, I am the light of the world. Uh -huh. And guess what he did? He opened the blind man's eyes. You want some proof? Yes, sir. Never had it ever been heard of a man opening the eyes of the blind. All right. 
They called him in. They said, well, who is it that opened your eyes? How are you? He said, the one called Jesus, spit on the ground, ate some spittle, and put it on my eyes. And they said, well, we know who Moses is. Yeah. We don't know who this Jesus is. And the blind man said, that's a peculiar thing. Because yeah. never has it ever been heard mm -hmm. that a blind man's eyes has been opened and you don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. you know what they told the blind man? You get out of here. Yeah. So that's how he did. He proved that he is the light of the world. Yeah. And, and John 9, verse 5, as long as I am in the world, yeah. I am the light of the world. Yeah. And when he had thus spoken, he sped on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Amen. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpretation sent. And he went therefore and washed and came back seeing. Yeah. You want some proof? That's a, that's He's a proof. I am that's what I am that I am. Yes. And people don't want to believe Jesus. They don't matter. It doesn't matter what you say. They don't want to believe. Oh, Brother, wait a minute. Look at that. Luke 11 and verse 30, 34. Luke 11, 34. What does he say there, brother? The light of the body is the eye. Right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when thy eyes see it, thy whole body also is full of light. Now, if you, you look at the truth, if you look at it, you see it's the truth, you can understand. But if you don't want it, you're not going to take it. What else did he say, brother? But when that eye is evil, uh -huh. the body also is full of darkness. Why is the eye evil? You see what Jesus did. You know he's the son of God, and you still won't take it. The Bible says the whole body is full of darkness. Mm -hmm. What if Jesus came and said, I am a good shepherd? All right. You know what they'll say? Prove it. You say you're a good shepherd? You prove it. All right. And you know what we would want to go to is John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and is not a shepherd who's on the, who own the sheep are not, seeth that the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catches and scatters the sheep. You know what Jesus did to prove that he is who he is for the sheep? He laid down his life for the sheep. Let me see somebody lay down their life for you. You say, well, I don't believe that Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd is the one that will lay down his life. Man, if you just on the payroll, you go around, <laughs> don't have those sheep. No right, man. But if you're the good shepherd, you're going to stand up for the sheep. Yes, sir. And that's what he did. Brother Williams, in John 10, verse 14. John 10, 14. Now, what I want you all to do is to number the amount of times that in this reading that he said he laid down his life. John 10, 14, what does he say? I am the good shepherd, uh -huh. and know my sheep, right. and am known of mine. Right. As the Father, Father knoweth me, uh -huh. even so know I the Father. Right. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what makes him the good shepherd. <laughs> Nobody else is going to lay down their life for you. What else, brother? In other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, uh -huh. them also must I bring and they shall hear my voice, yes, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, of the sheep mean the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Not talking about the denomination, this country, this religion over here. This way, it's Jew. In the Bible, there's only two people right. there's Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. Now, the Jews were the ones who had salvation, and Jesus said, No, no, there's going to be some more coming in. Yeah. The Gentiles, and, and I'm glad he let the Gentiles in, brother. Because yeah. we are in here who are Gentiles. Yeah. He said, other sheep I have, that I, and then they're going to bring them along. They're going to be one fold mm -hmm. under one shepherd. Yeah. And that's the good shepherd. Yeah. And, good shepherd. Yeah. and what proved he's a good shepherd is he laid down his life for the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. What else, brother? Therefore does my father love me, because I lay down my life, yeah. that I might take it again. Uh, now, 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 you might die for somebody, but you can't take it up again. Yeah. No. <laughs> he said, I lay down my life. That I can take it up again. Yeah. Only one person can make that claim. Yeah. What else, brother? No man take it from me, but uh -huh. I lay it down. Yes, uh -huh. I have power to lay it down. Yes. And I have power to take it again. Only yeah. one person can do that, brother. Yeah, exactly. And what proved that he was the good shepherd? That he laid down his life. When Moses went out and he said, my God said, let my people go. They said, what sign do you have? He had that staff. Yeah. He threw it on the ground. Yeah. It became a snake. 
He picked it up, it became a snap again. He put his hand in his bosom, it was, it was leprous, and he brought it out, it was clean. The, the magicians of Egypt started doing the same. They started doing a lot of that stuff. And when he started turning the rivers in the blood, they start, they say, this thing is from God. You better let these people go. We can do something, but we can't do all of that stuff. And so God is the one that sent the son. And the son came saying the same thing, I am that I am. And if you don't believe it, he'll prove it to you. And, and Titus 2, 14. You know what? He gave himself for us. Nobody killed Jesus and he didn't know about it. He gave himself for us. Amen. And people think, well, you know, they didn't accept him. And, and he, when he comes back again, he's going to establish the church. He couldn't do it the first time. But the second time, if he couldn't do it the first time, what makes you think he can do it the second time? Right. He gave his life for this church. Amen. He who gave himself for us that we may redeem us from all iniquity. That's the good part, brother. <laughs> He redeemed us from all of our sins. Yeah. And in Hebrews uh, 1 verse 3, who be in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself Amen. purged us from our sins. Yeah. You know, they say you're the spinning image. You look at a chapter and you look at a little chapter and a yeah. and they're the spinning, spinning image of each other. <clears throat> yes, sir. That's what Jesus is to God. He's the spirit. And by himself, yeah. he purged us from our sins. Yes, That's the good shepherd, brother. And Galatians 1, 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from his present evil. Yes, and Lord knows we need to be delivered. Yes, and that's why he said, brother, when he's Amen. in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shade. Yes, sir. I shall not. I shall he maketh yes, me to lie down in green passages. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. <laughs> That's his name. Though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Yes. Thou anoints my head with oil. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence right. of my Lord. All, right. All of these things the Lord is. You know why? Because he's a good shepherd. And your low, low shall I walk in the spring. Read that book. Yeah. Read that book. Yeah. Yeah. Read that book. Yeah. The shadow of death. Thou the table before me in the presence of my head. Right. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup running over me. Now, do you know what cup running over means? That means you're going to have more than you ever need. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. more than enough. You know, you have those waitresses, they come to your table and they say, you want some more to drink? They keep that cup full, right? Yeah. And still, they got to chase them down. Man, can I get a little more water? No more water. Your cup just running over. Yes, mm -hmm. That's the kind of shepherd we have. Yes. Lord, what else? Right. Surely goodness and mercy shall sure, follow sure. all the days of my life. Amen. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Everywhere yeah. Brother Jones go, you know, who's walking behind Brother Jones? Goodness and mercy. Yeah. Yeah. If Brother Jones talk, turn to the right, goodness and mercy falls in all the days of his life. You know why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm trying to tell you we can prove it. Because he laid down his life for the sheep. You find somebody later. And then he say, I'll pick it up again. And you know what three days Brother told us? He got up. That's proof, brother. If you want proof, God can show you some proof. Yes, sir. You say, well, brother, brother Jackson, what if he said that he is the bread of life? I know you can't prove that, brother. <laughs> you know what he did in, in John 6, 32. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from yes, heaven. Sir. Yes, sir. Oh, they're talking about Moses fed us. That manna came from heaven. You know, God is the one that brought that manna down. Yes, yes. But he said there's a true bread. True bread. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's, what's a true bread? I thought bread was bread. <laughs> he said, no. There's a true bread that coming down from heaven. For the bread of God is he. Wait a minute. Up there he said Moses gave you that. And now he said bread is he. He went from an inanimate object to an animate object. So that manna was not the real bread. But Jesus, Jesus is the real bread. He said the bread is he which cometh down from heaven. I'm the bread. I don't know what happened. Yes, sir. Hopefully we get it right. Okay. He said that 
And they said, hey, the Lord evermore give us this bread. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I am. I, I am the bread. Real life. Amen. So every time he said, I am, they got back. Because they remember Exodus chapter 3, when Moses said, tell me who, who, who's going to send me. He said, you tell them I am. I am. I am. And what Jesus is claiming is to be the Son of God. All right. And he said, I am the bread of life. Yeah. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Don't, Don't you get tired of being yeah. hungry? You don't have to be hungry. Don't have to be. Oh, you know, my wife cooks some good meals, but I don't have to be hungry. No, a spiritual food. All right. All right. For the word of God. Amen. We don't have to hunger and thirst anymore because God has satisfied us. Right. He said, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. No. He that believeth on me shall never hunger. No. And you know what they said to him? They said, prove it. Prove it. And you know what he did? Prove it. And, uh, prove it. I'm having a good time here with this <laughs> uh, Brother Williams, in uh, John chapter 9, I mean John chapter 6, verse 13, I mean John chapter 6, verse 9, John chapter 6, verse 9, there is a lad here, uh-huh, we had five farms ago, yeah. and two small fishes, right, but what are they among so many, uh -huh. all right, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. Okay. Now there was much grass in the place. Mm -hmm. So the men sat down in numbers about 5,000. Uh -huh. And Jesus took the loaves, wow. and when he had given thanks, he distributed mm -hmm. to the disciples. Uh -huh. And the disciples to them that were set down. Uh -huh. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Right. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, mm -hmm. gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. You know, he fed 5,000 men, not including the women in the church. church. All right. Amen. And they were filled. You know, I don't know if you're aware, we, we're in this century, we eat as much as we want till we're full. Yes. Sir. But in that century, a lot of times people didn't get enough to eat, brother Tom. Right. They, they, you know, they did with what they did, made do with what they have. Yeah. But these people ate till they were full. And the fragments that they gathered up was more than they had. All right. Oh, you want to prove that he's the bread of life? That's what he did. He proved it. That he is the bread of yes, life. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay. Brother, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. All you have to do is want it. You want the truth? You want the word of God? All you have to do is hunger after it. Amen. Those are the ones who are going to be filled. If you want the word of God, it's available. Here it is right here. Yeah. Put a little oil in. Put a little night oil in. <laughs> put a little lamp on, Put a lamp at night and, and start reading it when you lay down to go to sleep. Start reading it when you wake up in the morning. You can get the truth if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. You shall be filled. Oh, yeah, he did what he said he was going to do. What if he said, I'm the vine? Mm -hmm. what, what if he said, I am the vine? Now, you said, preacher, now I know you can't prove that he is the vine. And the Bible says in John 15 and verse 1, I am the true vine. Not only is he the vine, he's the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch that of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And takes every away. branch that does bear fruit, yeah. he prunes it and make it bear more fruit. You're going to be cut either way. All right, all right. Either you're going to be cut off or you're going to be pruned back. Yeah. But what makes you know that you are a part of the vine is that you're bearing fruit. Because right. yeah. you can't help but doing it. You're a part of the vine. Yeah. You'd rather be cut back and pruned than to be cut off. Yeah. What happens to a branch when it's cut off? It's no good. But you got to stay connected to the vine. Because he said, from apart from me, you can do nothing. And Jesus came and said, I'm the vine, and I just want to know how can you prove that. It says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. 
So in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, you know what he does to prove that we're part of the vine? He disciplines us. All right, all right. He cuts us back. The way he cuts us back, the way he prunes us, is with the word. He, did you know when your daddy beat you, he loved you? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> You, you know when your mama when your mama knocked it down, she really loved you. <laughs> you know when they tell you to go in the room and turn off the TV and turn off everything in there and just think about what you did, they loved you. And that's how he proved it by disciplining us. That's yes, why I said, well, I want a good God that I don't have to go through no ups and downs. And I, if you had that kind of God, then that's not a real God because he doesn't really love you. And the Bible said in Hebrews 12, 5, my son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor by nor be weary when you, you reprove by him. Mm-hmm. For the Lord disciplines who? Mm-hmm. The yeah. one that he loves. Amen. You know why your daddy walked it? Because he loved you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sir. And you didn't see it, nobody can see it. What a love. If you're not doing well, if you, they'll, they'll do whatever it takes to correct you because they love you. Man. That's how you know you're still on the fire because yeah. God disciplines the ones he loves. Yeah. You get old and you get older and, and, and you try to talk to your children, you can't whoop them anymore, but you sure can try to guide them yeah. where yeah. they want to go. You still wish you could whoop them, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Chad a little too big. <laughs> hey, Chad a little too big to be whipping you. But what I'm saying is, we have to realize that that's how God brings us into life. By taking us through things. This, this COVID is a way of bringing us into life. Right. This COVID is a way to design to see whether you love God or not. Right. You're going to stick with him or not. A lot of people ran away from God. Right. You got people, you thought were pillars in the church. You thought they were show stone Christians and a little bit of adversity coming. There they go. What I'm trying to tell you is that that's how Jesus proved that I am the vine, by disciplining us, mm-hmm. bringing us into correction. All right. We can be what he says, for the Lord disciplines the one he loves, he loves and chastises every son that he receives. That's the way it's going to be. And he moves 12 and verse 10. He prunes us. It says, for the, for the very, for, very for a few days, check Trust me. Because once I start stumbling, you know, it's hard for me to get back up. For they barely for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Uh huh. But he for our profit. Why does he do it? For our profit. Yeah, yeah. You say, well, baby, I'm beating you because I love you, huh? <laughs> you what? You don't realize it's for your profit. Yeah. Okay, what else, brothers? That we might be partakers of his holiness. That's how we're going to be partakers of his holiness. To go through these chastisements. To go through these things. You know, sister, the one sister is a a teacher. And the reason she gives you the test, so you'll know where you need to improve. It's not to hurt you, but it's to better us. Mm -hmm. And that's for our own improvement. It says to be partakers of his holiness. Mm -hmm. What else, brother? Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joy. Right. right. But grief. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. You know why it's a peaceful fruit? Because you remain in on the vine. Because <laughs> he is the vine. I am the vine. I am the true vine. Yeah. It's peaceful because you remain in on the vine. Amen. And you, you get cut off that vine, you could, you, you, you're done. Yeah. What else, brother? Unto them which are exercised thereby. You go through something. That's what the exercise are. When you exercise, you get stronger and stronger and stronger. When you go through these adversities, it makes us stronger that we'll be able to stand in the last day. Right. And that's the only thing we're trying to do. Make it home to yes. that, that boss on your job Amen. trying to stop you. Amen. That, that man that cut you off on I-95, on 595, trying to stop you. Amen. Your neighbor who wanna who wanna cut off on your side, trying yeah. to stop you. All right. All right. It's always somebody trying to stop you from, and we're just simply trying to make it home. Yes. But we got to remain on the vine. Somebody said, well, a church church. No, listen, let me tell you something. This building at 9 o'clock was just a building. Mm-hmm. Once we got here at 10, that's when it became the church. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Church is a people, not this building. Yeah. And we're all trying to help. Yeah. 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 
And you said Jesus proved it. He proved it by disciplining you. Yeah. Somebody said, well, my parents didn't love me because they whooped whoop me. No, they did love you. Yeah. But you just didn't know it. <laughs> you didn't understand it. I'm trying to tell you that they love you. That's what he tried to try to hurt. In Hebrews 4, 12, look at me. How does he discipline? What does he use? Does he have a big switch? Did you go out to go cut your own switch off the tree? Do you know you had to go cut them switches? You come back that little old nothing them switch. And you go out to go get a branch. And on that, they use that, that, that big belt. What? How does he discipline us, Brother Wager? In what fashion? Hebrews 4, 12. So the word of God is quick uh -huh. and powerful uh -huh. and sharper than any two-edged sword, right. piercing even to the dividing of the sun of the soul and spirit uh -huh. and of the joints and marrow, uh -huh. and it is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He uses the word in this man. Does this word tell you what you need to do? This word tell you how you should be living? It's supposed to bring you in the and if you don't want to take it, you're gonna fall off the vine. Right. Cut off the you're gonna be wound, you're gonna wind up on the ground. Yes, and he said, well, if you don't remain in me, apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. We're talking about spiritual life. We're not talking about uh, uh, world. You can do things in the world apart from God, but they're gonna wind up being nothing. Right. But spiritually, you can't accomplish anything apart from God. Amen. And he Amen. uses the word to bring us into subjection. Amen. And we need Amen. to try to just do what he says. Yeah. If you know you're doing wrong and the Bible convicts you and that word starts cutting you, cutting you, going and coming, mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to change it. Amen. If I come down your road and I'm stepping on your toes, next time I come, move your feet. Because right. <laughs> right. the word's not going to change for the preacher. For anybody, from no, the sir. pulpit to the door, Amen. the word applies to all of us. Amen. Amen. And he is the true mind. Yes. And he proved it. He proved it because he disciplined us. Amen. Brother, wait a minute. John 15 and verse 7. John 15 and verse 7. What does he say there, brother? If you abide in me, uh -huh. and my word abide in you, uh -huh. ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. The way we know you're on the line is that you abide in him. And you ask what you will, he'll, he'll, he'll provide it. Mm -hmm. If it's his will. If it's what his will, will? amen. <laughs> Herein is my Father glorified, uh -huh. that he bear much fruit, so shall he be my disciple. Yes, Who's going to be glorified? The uh, Father's the uh, one going to be glorified. Uh, that we bear fruit. But if you're not on the vine, you can't bear the fruit. Right. You know you're doing wrong. You got to stop doing wrong. You're not helping yourself. You're not working for God. You know, we've gotten lax since this time of COVID, right? And we won't read our Bible. We won't pray. We, well, I'm still on the line. You're not on the line. All right, if, if you're not doing what God tells you to do, if you're not doing fruit, if you're not bringing forth fruit, if you're not working for the Lord, you're not on the line. Right. We become complacent. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. Oh, oh I know. I'm, I, you know. You don't know anything. He's telling you, you got to remain on the line. Amen. When that word corrects you, you know that's not right. You need to stop doing it. The word is what designed to discipline in us and bring us in line. And that's why we have this word. And that's what I'm asking you today. Just remain on the vine. That's how you prove it. What if, G, what if Christ came to you and said, I am the resurrection? You say, well, preacher, I, you know, I want him to prove it. And they said in John 11 and verse 21, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. You know, they said to Jesus and they said, Lord, the one you love, he's dying. He's sick. And, and, and then he waited for a day. And then they went and they, he had gotten there, he had died. And they said, the, the, the disciples said, Lord, we had just been over that way. If we go, they try to kill us. Well, we don't need to go back. If he's, if he's asleep, he'll be all right. And he said, no, Lazarus is dead. That's right. dead. And I'm glad for your sake uh -huh. that he died. Uh -huh. Because you can see the power of God. Amen. That's right. And he said to them, they said, Martha, to Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother would have not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to you. Amen. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Right. And Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. And Jesus said, I am. Right. Right. The resurrection. Amen. I am that I am that I am. Yes, and they said, no, you, you, you 
really don't bump your head, that's Brother Walker. You really don't bump your head on that, because you mean you the resurrection, this man over here dead. They want him to prove it. Brother Williams, in John 11, 42, do you think Jesus could prove it? In John 11, 42, what happened there, Brother Williams? And I knew about, and I knew that thou hearest me mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. But because of the people which stand by, I said mm -hmm. that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. And what happened, brother? Amen. And he that was dead came forth. Well, you want some proof that I am that I am? Yeah. Bring a dead man to life. Yeah. And that's the only proof you and I need. All of us, everybody listening to this, listen to this uh, sermon or somebody's in here today, all we need is the resurrection. Yeah, the, resurrection. the resurrection proved that he is who he said he was going to be. Yeah. And he proved that he is the resurrection by bringing Lazarus forth. Yeah. Yes, sir. So in Luke chapter 11, verse 29, brother B, Luke 11, 29, know the people of that day, they wanted some proof too. Yeah. They said, give us another sign or do another miracle. He said, no, 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 no. You only need one thing. It's the same thing you need. I need. It's the same thing all of us need. Yes, sir. It's the resurrection. And in Luke 11, 29, what does he say there, brother? And when the people were gathered thick together, mm -hmm. he began to say, this is an evil generation. Yeah, all right. They seek a sign. Uh -huh. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonah's. Now, what happened with Jonah? For as Jonah was a sign unto Nineveh, unto the Ninevites, uh -huh. so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Uh -huh. Now you know Jonah was eaten up by this way. Yeah. And he was he was spit out. Everybody knew he had been swallowed up by this well because the people on the ship had to throw him over. And when the whale put his head up on land and spit Jonah out, yeah. Jonah went running, preaching to those people. Yeah. And they said, well, we heard about you being swallowed up. And every one of those people repented. Everyone repented. All they needed was that sign of his death, yes, his burial, and, and his resurrection. Yeah. That was enough to convince all of them. Uh -huh. And he said, the people of Nineveh are going to convince you. Because one greater than Jonah yes. is him. Is him. Yes. Yes. And I'm trying to yes. tell you, Jesus proved everything that he That's said. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, I am, every time he offered some proof. Yeah. Yeah. And he brought a dead man to life. Yeah. And the same thing happened with us. We were dead. Yeah. Yeah. We were dead. Yeah. And then Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Yeah. And then Jesus said, Jackson, yeah. come forth. Yeah. And he that was dead came forth. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened to Lazarus. It's the same thing that happened to us. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you, Jesus proves everything. Well, maybe one more you're going to ask him to prove. He says, I'm the door. I, now, I know you can't prove that, Jackson. He said, I am the door. Well, the Bible said in John 10, verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find us. You only have one way to the Father. You can't find any other way. The thief come in, steal and destroy. If you, if you come in through the window, if you come in, you, you, you come in the wrong way. He said, I am the door. They said, I don't believe that. I don't believe. You know what Jesus did? He died for us. He made a way out of nowhere. He is the door. And, and he said, John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Stop looking for other ways around the God. You can't get to God any other way. It's only through Jesus. Amen. And that's how he proved it. He proved that he was the door. And he, you know what Jesus did? And uh, it says in uh, Hebrews 4, 14, brother, because nobody can get to the to God without a high priest. Under that old system, you needed a high priest. Yeah. And the high priest would come in once a year with, not without blood, and he would sprinkle the blood on the top, and he would make atonements for the sins of the people. Right. But he only did that once a year. And guess what? He had to, he had to make atonements for himself before he went in there. So you need a high priest 
in order to get to the Father, you got to have a high priest. And I just want to know who is our high priest. Come on. Come on. Because there's no other way to the Father but by him. Yes, he is the door, so you need a high priest. Yeah. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, brother, what does he say there? Seeing then that we have a great high priest yeah. mm -hmm. that is passed into the heaven, yeah. Jesus, the Son of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us hold fast our profession. Mm -hmm. yeah. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. He passed into the heavens. You know the, the old high priest of the old covenant, they would go through the curtain to the holies of holies. But guess where our high priest went? He, pent, he went up into heaven, through the heavens to go to the Father. And he is the one that can feel the same thing, go through the same thing. You need somebody to sympathize with you, right? Right. Sometimes you you want some. Sometimes you ask the sister Mary for some sympathy. She won't give it to you. <laughs> you need somebody to empathize with yourself. He can do that because he has felt our same infirmities. Yeah, yeah. He may have had high blood pressure. <laughs> he may have taken cholesterol medicine. Hey, no. You know, he you, you you go through these same things so he can feel our infirmities. What else did he say, brother? But was at all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. That's what I'm saying. You need a high priest that has no sin. Yes, sir. Now, nobody in here fits that bill. Amen. 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 Only one person Amen. Does, that's G. Right. Amen. Amen. And let me show you how he made the cross. He went to the cross. Yes, sir. You can't get to the Father without the cross. Right. And in John chapter 14 and verse 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. That's what he said. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. My Father's house are many mansions. If it's not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He wasn't up there with a hammer. <laughs> He, he wasn't up there with a, with a saw and some nails. The way he went to prepare a place for us is through the cross. Yes. Somebody had to die for you. Amen. Somebody had to die for me. Amen. That's how he prepared a place for us. He went to the cross yes, sir. for you and for me. Amen. And without, some, without him doing that, there's no door. No way. There's no way to the Father. Yes, Amen. What does he say there, brother? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Right. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen. And wherever I go, you know, uh -huh. and the way you know. Yes, sir. The way, the way, wherever I go, you know, and you know the way I'm going. Yeah. And Thomas said, Unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, yeah. and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am, I am the, way. the way, the truth. Like, yeah. I'm trying to tell you Jesus proved everything he said he was going to do. He yeah. proved it. Yeah. He did the same thing the Father. He's the fitting image of his Father. Yes, when God sent Moses with the I Am's and God sent his son with the same I Am's right. and everything that Jesus said, yeah. he'll come. Yes, you know what Jesus said to them? He said, I am the light of the world. Yeah. He opened the blind man's eyes. You know what Jesus said? I am the good shepherd. And the sh good shepherd lay down, lay down his life Amen. for the sheep. Amen. You know what Jesus said? I am the bread of life. Amen. And he fed 5,000 men, not including the women. Right. Everything he said, he proved it. Amen. You know what he said? I am the true vine. And you know what he did? He disciplined us. Amen. He spanked us. With the, and you know we needed that spanking. Sure mm -hmm. You ever got what you didn't need? Mm -hmm. You ever got something you didn't, you didn't deserve? <laughs> You know what he said? He said, I am the resurrection. And he went to a dead man tomb. Mm -hmm. And he called them forth. And one of these days, he's going to say, everybody come forth. And everybody that's in the dead, in the bed, buried is going to come forth. Amen. And you know what else he said? He said, I am the door. And what he did was he went to the cross to provide a way from Amen. here to God. Amen. And I want to know today, would you believe? that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Would you right. do what he tells you? Would you hear his word? Would you believe what he says? Would you, would you repent, Luke 13, through I tell you, Nate, except you repent? Would you be willing to confess with the mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Amen. And would you be willing to confess and be baptized for the remission of your sins? He that believeth baptized shall be saved. And I add you to the church that you can read about in the Bible. Do you know everybody's church is not in the Bible? 
If you can find it, please tell me. Right. Jesus said, upon this rock, I shall build my church. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail the hell. Amen. You can't go off and do your own thing and think God is going to accept that. Amen. You got to do what God tells you to do. Amen. It's so simple. Yes, but you come down this aisle and give me your hand, give Christ your heart. And say, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for me. And every time Jesus said, I am, he proved who he was. And I know he is who he said he was. Would you come now and be baptized for the remission of your sin? Because God loves you too much to let you just die like that. And it's, if you don't do it, then God is the one not at, at fault. You're the one at fault. Yes, God loves us all. Yes, or if you're a Christian, you stop living right. Why? What's out there? What, what's so great in the world that you will leave God? Why would you go back into something that's no good in the first place? Come on home. On back to the Lord. Because he's standing there with open arms and he's waiting and he's ready to run, run to you and meet you halfway. Amen. All you got to do is say, Father, I've sinned and I want to be restored. I want to get back to your good graces. And he'll say, Put a ring on my son, thing. Put shoes on his feet. Yes, Put a robe on his back. Because Amen. my son that was dead is now alive in that Amen. For everything that God says, he proves it. There's no reason for you not to believe what God says because there's mm-hmm. enough proof. In this Bible to convict the whole world. Yes, sir. But you gotta have the right eye. Yes. Remember the one eye is evil and one eye is open. If you got an evil eye, it doesn't matter what it says, you're not gonna believe. Mm-hmm. But if you have a, a good eye, the light comes into the body. Pure. And it's good light in the city. You know, you know, brother, Thomas just had cataract surgery. And that one that, that eye, that light couldn't get to that eye. Right. Now he can see 2020. <laughs> What I'm saying is, you need to let the word of yes. God work on you yes. and work on me and work on us all. Jesus said, I am, he proved it. Would you come down that aisle? Let that be known. As you got to be standing, sing the song. God is calling the particle come without delay.